Max, go when you hear the music. I'm hitting play right now. Three, two, one, fly through. Boom, here we go, sunset. Here we go, sunset, baby. Hey, my name is Mark Myers, and I recently directed the new Arkells music video called All Roads. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how we made it. Sorry about my voice. Uh, two days ago, I was playing basketball and somebody gave me a big shoulder right into my throat. So it sounds like this. So the concept was pretty simple. Basically, it's a single shot music video using a drone. Oh, here it comes. We'll leave me back and sending it. Go, baby. Beautiful. And in this video, I'm going to break down why we had to shoot twice, <laughs> where the cut points were, what the challenges were, and what we learned what I learned. So I'm, I'm really happy with the end result, but I'd be lying if I said that it was easy because it wasn't. It was very complicated, very technical, and I didn't do it perfectly. So just a quick little aside to give more context on my kind of vision, uh, quote unquote. So the goal for me was that the video would work even if the band wasn't in it. The way I was thinking of it was as if we were designing a roller coaster path that was in perfect sync to the song. I later realized that wasn't super important, but just know that was kind of my starting point. So I usually like to start with uh, the conversation and how the video came to be. So I'll start there. The lead singer of the band, his name is Max. He came by my place and we just went for a walk and we were just talking about random things. And towards the end of our 20 minute walk, he's like, hey, we've got this other song. And he kind of played me a little clip from it and he was basically wanting to pick my brain about a concept. So he wanted to do a, a single shot, kind of similar to how they had done last year for some music videos. And he was asking me about a 360 camera that I own, the GoPro Max. He was basically kind of wondering what can it do? What's it capable of? And I was as I was describing what it could do, I was like, you know what would be a better idea? And I brought up this concept of shooting the video with an FPV drone. Normal drones that most people use are very cinematic insofar as they can, they just pretty beautiful shots. They're really smooth, they're kind of slower. Whereas an FPV drone, I think has its roots in racing, where they go through little obstacle courses, flip around, dive, dip, everything else. So the reference that I shared with Max during our walk was this really cool and pretty popular video that circled the internet about two months ago, and it was the bowling alley drone shot. So Max was intrigued and he basically asked me, research, try and find who can do this. I told him that we'd need a drone pilot and he kind of laughed at that and thought it was funny that they're called pilots. So I did a quick Google search and one of the first things that popped up was a company called First Class Drones uh, in my area in Toronto. So I checked out their Instagram, I reached out, the guy's name is Misha, and the conversation started and the ball started to roll. So because the song is called All Roads and the lyrics say all roads will lead me back to you, Max and I were both on the same wavelength of, of thinking that we need a location that kind of has crossroads or multiple in points where various band members could come in and out of this storyline. So Mike D is the lead guitarist and uh, we started talking to him about the concept as well. And he had some locations in mind in the Hamilton area, the band's from Hamilton, just 45 minutes from Toronto. So we did a location scout. The first place was a movie theater drive-in and it was cool and it had some interesting elements to it, but overall it just kind of was falling flat. Didn't, didn't love that location. The next place Mike took us to was called Devil's Punch Bowl and it's in a place called Stony Creek just outside of Hamilton. Immediately it was like, oh wow, this is really good. Maybe it's because we went there at magic hour. Everything just looked amazing. What was cool about this location was that there was this country road that kind of winded around this escarpment or cliff area, dip down, ravine, wooded area, overlooked uh, Hamilton, and it looked beautiful, especially when we visited that day. But I just saw the drone dipping down into that ravine and flying through the trees and back up. So for me, I was like, I can see this working. So Ashley, the band's manager, basically the next day just started to try to secure the location and make sure we could actually film there, um, which she did. 
So meanwhile, while we were doing this, I was making my text edit. And for those who haven't heard me describe what that is, it's essentially pre-editing the music video, but rather than use any visuals, I'm just using text. So with this one, it was much more technical because we we're trying to do a one take with a drone. It was really important to know how much time we had per section. So I had a countdown timer so I could notify the pilot when the next section was happening. And so everyone was on the same page. So next, Misha, the drone pilot, and his right-hand man, Dave, and myself did a location scout with the drone. We're good? Good? Yeah, clear. We talked about the concept, the flight path, and potential compromises that we would have to do based on the technical limitation of the drone. So we did some tests, and the big thing to account for was transmission distance and signal strength. Yeah, it's in the field beyond the barn. Let's go. Let's take a walk. And we talked about potential issues and compromises that would be necessary. For example, we both wanted a one take video because that is way cooler. But the reality is we were already planning where those cut points could be that I would then try to hide in post. So after that technical scout with the drone pilot, I adjusted my text edit to be even more accurate. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we had to shoot this twice, uh, which was a bummer on my, on my side. I kind of messed up. So I'll quickly just try and talk about the first shoot. Essentially, what happened was I didn't give us enough time to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. I wanted to shoot it at golden hour, which is where the sun is like, you know, just above the horizon, the last like hour, hour and a half of the day before it goes down, where everything just looks golden and great. Originally, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a one take video. So let's just shoot it then. We'll test it and then shoot it and we'll be good. When I realized that we were gonna shoot it in multiple sections, I should have adjusted my thought process on when we, when we should shoot it and I didn't. So that was an error on my part. We didn't get close enough to max. The performances weren't like cool enough. The flight path was okay, but not great and the transition points, although I could have worked with them, they weren't smooth enough for me to be able to hide it easy enough in post. Me back to you. So the sun was already down and we got our last shot. And as the sun lowered, so did my happiness levels. I was like, damn, I didn't pull this one off. I kind of did a decent job in the last few videos for them. And I was super excited about this concept. I'm like, let me direct this one. And I felt like I let them and myself down. Max was super nice and super positive as he normally is, which is nice uh, and kind of him. He's like, oh no, it's gonna be great. Like, I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. And if not, we'll do it again. So that kind of made me feel better. So I went back, I slapped the edit together and I sent it to them, I think the next day. And it was fine, it was fine. It wasn't as I wanted. Luckily, Max and Ash decided, let's do it again. It was like a dress rehearsal. They're like, if we can shoot it by this date in the morning instead of at sunset when no one's there, I was all in, checked with the band, they were in. So shoot number two was a go. Because for the second shoot, we decided to shoot it in the morning instead of at sunset. Um, I ended up staying in a hotel in Hamilton the night before, just so I wouldn't have to drive the like 45 minutes to an hour at like 3.30 in the morning. And also because I went to Hamilton the night before the shoot, I walked the path of the drone. So I'm in the bottom of the ravine where the drone flies down through here and then through those trees. I'm just here to get rid of some of the things that might get in our way. And basically got rid of branches and shrubs and things that could affect its flight path because on the first go, um, the drone accidentally hit Scraggle which is what Misha calls like loose branches and things. Hiking back up the trail. It's quite a hike, especially when you go the wrong way. I went, went the wrong way. So day two, I arrived on the location at about 5.40 a.m. and it looked beautiful. The only problem was it's so damn windy. I don't know if you can hear that wind. Uh, so that's rather upsetting on a reshoot day where you want everything to go perfectly. Whew. There we go. 
So this time we wanted to work way quicker. So we just walked through what the drone was doing, the flight path, described each section, what we needed to do, and we basically just went out to accomplish it. Okay, there's Max and Mike going down the street. The sun's right, the sun's up. Let's get this. Something I really wanted to see for the opening shot was this beautiful cinematic swooping shot that came down and revealed that Max was actually singing along to the song. I thought that was gonna be a cool thing to be like, oh wow, that's in sync from here on out. The first time we shot with Max, uh, with the drone flying behind him, he kind of was looking around a bit too much because we, he didn't know where the drone was. This time, the goal is to make Max look cooler, so we just had the drone fly next to the car, and Max looked out to the side uh, as he sang, which was a much better opening. Misha dipped down, flew through the tree, hit the flip exactly in the right spot, so the first shot was done. So when the drone flips at the music hit, uh, that's our first cut point. So then for the next shot, we relocated to above the falls, and then Misha just started that part. I counted him in to be like three, two, one, flip the drone there, and then find Max. That shot went much better. The performance was Tim. with Tim was better, the performance with Tony, there was more life to it, and basically the drone just had to fly through the fence, which was our second cut point. And it was important, the angle that the drone flies through the fence. If it kind of flies on a, a bit to the right or on the angle, it just warps that whole perspective in the background. And I basically was using the bars in the fence as like a window to get us to the next shot. And that's kind of how I did that. I realized that when we did the like third shot through the fence, that the shadows on the ground from the shot before were no longer there because Max and Tony were no longer there. So to help blend that cut, I just used the shadow from the shot before and kind of masked it in to help blend that transition a bit better. The biking shot, uh, I'll say really quickly. My vision originally was like, I wanted to feel like it was one take. We were trying to get the timing down perfectly to get Max and Nick to like meet up exactly at the right time. And Max is like, can I just start with Nick? Like, and I was like, uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, here we go. And Max and Nick go. Two, one, go. Here we go. Here we go. This so that worked out way better. The drone came in, they were biking together. We got really close to Max and like went off into the field. Go, go, fly, fly, fly. Go, Max, go, Max. We got five seconds. Two, one. Max sang his part in the field. That looked good. The sun kind of wasn't perfect, but it's still nice. Send it, Max, send it. Because it was so windy that day, we couldn't have the drone circle Max the way we wanted to, to then lead into the next shot. You know the wind's coming this way? Yeah. I have to do that to slow down. Yeah. I'm now looking at the sky. Yeah. I then have to even it out and basically do a blind. Yep. Yeah. We're doing the best we can, but when it's windy, we're still gonna get it. Because of him. So Misha had to fly the drone, so the back of it was where we wanted to go to next, which wasn't ideal, because then it made his entrance blind. He had to like swing the drone around and then find his entry path uh, down into the tunnel. The shot of the bike was perfect, but going into the tunnel was messed up. So I used another take to basically hide the entry down into the trees. You can kind of reframed it and positioned it and rotated it to try to sneak a little cut in there to get to the tunnel. And then going through the tunnel, there's another cut there where I basically took the shot flying out of the tunnel um, and kind of shrunk it down so that the window on the other side of the tunnel basically started small and then filled up and we flew into that final shot. So that cut point worked pretty well. So the drone dipped down, came back up, caught Max on the path. It flew low on the path just as we liked. He made his way towards the band and the drone flew out over the edge and the video was over. So we got it. Oh, and you might be wondering, maybe or maybe not, like, oh, where's the shadow of the drone? Like, how are you hiding that? Where I could, given the time that I had, I painted out 
the shadow of the drone. There's a few places where it would have just taken too much time and effort, which was in the section with Tony. It's kind of over his pants and on the ground. It's probably possible. It just would have been time consuming and I didn't have that time. So that's it. That is the making of all roads. But I also did want to mention lessons learned and I kind of touched on various things throughout, but to kind of distill them now, one of them being prep, prep, prep. And I did, but not enough. Basically give yourself more time to execute your vision. Uh, things tend to always go longer than you anticipate. And although I've done these a number of times, I'm still hopeful and foolish to think it's gonna happen faster than it does, and it just doesn't. And really make sure that everyone knows what they're doing, knows that there's an urgency, and you need to start moving fast. Another lesson learned was to spend more time on performances. I'm pretty technical, and this video was technical in a lot of ways and trying to plan it out and like orchestrate what should happen and when, but I could have spent more time on the humans, so lesson there. So another lesson is that perfection is the enemy of good. Uh, I forget who said that. While making a project, sometimes you get into your own like creative vision and you just want to execute it as intended. Sometimes that doesn't matter. The things you think are important aren't the important things. And you ultimately have to play the hand that you're dealt as best as you can. Anyway, I can go on. Those are some of the lessons I learned. I want to thank everyone that helped me make this twice. Um, sorry about that. And thank you to Nathan Nash for letting me use your photos in this video. Bye. Thanks. Okay, let me talk about playback just for a second because um, it was something that we had to figure out. So for playback, normally you have a big PA system that like blasts the music out and everyone can hear it and the band plays over it. For this video, just based on the distance that the car was starting at at the beginning, uh, having a speaker system obviously just didn't make sense. So we had to find a solution. We used a cell phone, put it next to the speaker, then three-way called Misha, the pilot. He had his own phone that he could hear playback and then Max had his phone. So when he was in the car, like a kilometer away from where we were, he could hear playback um, perfectly so that uh, so that worked. Come on, son.